welcome to a demonstration of the double-edged mat um, composite node. And uh, we're going to show a few things that we can do with that node here. Uh, to start with the new standard Blender scene, um, I'm just going to delete that and add a couple of objects. Um, we're going to put in your basic circle. Uh, it's going to be part of our mask. Uh, and then I am going to just duplicate that. and make uh, an outer edge object for that mask. Um, you know, if we were wireframe, you can see we got both objects there. And then I am going to uh, make the camera look straight down at those objects just so we can get a good uh, view for the purposes of the video. Uh, we can do that. And then I'm going to throw a couple materials on here just so we can see uh, what we're doing. Uh, these materials are certainly not necessary for what we're going to do, uh, but it does make it easier for demonstration purposes to explain. Okay, uh, so the scene normally rendered would look like so, and I'm going to drop that render size down in a minute. Um, but what we have is a blue inner circle that's going to end up being uh, the opaque fully white you know part of this mask and then uh, the red area is going to turn into the feathered you know gradient um, portion of this mask um, and these are two completely independent objects they don't need to be one parented to the other or anything like that um, they can be two you know, totally separate objects um, and uh, the first way I'm going to demonstrate is using the uh, pass index for each object. So I'm going to set a pass index of 2 for the object that I want to be kind of that outer object. Uh, pass index of 1 for the inner object. And uh, just to speed things up a bit, I'm going to reduce the size of that. And we'll just set the tiles to 1. Uh, it does seem to run faster for a smaller scene if we just go ahead and set that to 1. Um, I'm also going to note in this demonstration I'm going to turn off color management uh, for the purposes of using this mask normally. Uh, you would not have to turn that off, uh, but since I'm not going to use it as a mask, I'm actually going to render the mask to actually show it to you. It would be affected by the color management. Uh, I'm going to turn it off just so the mask looks correct when you're seeing it. Um, that wouldn't normally have to be done. And so render, uh, here's our basic scene and then I am going to switch over to the node editor, the composite nodes, and say use nodes. And we have our standard you know, set of nodes here for the compositor. And then I am going to add uh, two ID masks. Uh, since I have two objects necessary for this, I'm going to add that double edge mat node and then for the sake of uh, looks just a little bit cleaner I'm going to blur it on the other end and switch that over to a fast Gaussian blur uh, really any blur would work it's not 100% necessary to actually blur that it just does look a little bit nicer when you do uh, and don't forget uh, your render layers to output the object index. Okay, so I'll connect the object index to the two ID masks. Uh, you'll notice there is a new option on the ID mask, the FS mode, that is the full sample mode. Um, normally what, under your anti-aliasing settings uh, there's a checkbox for full sample. Uh, you know, you don't need to turn full sampling on to render your normal scene. Uh, it does look nice when you do, but you don't have to. Um, but for the purposes of this double edge mat mask, uh, the way that the ID mask does its um, anti-aliasing calculations, it, this does work much nicer if you have full sample turned on. But rather than forcing the user to turn full sample on for the entire render, uh, there's a new option on here that can say, uh, just run the full sample anti-aliasing calculations for the output of this individual node. And then I'm going to say, uh, set index of 1 and index of 2. Uh, for the That was the blue circle on the inside had the index of 1. 
The red circle on the outside had the index of 2, and that's the outer mask. And I'm just going to run this through a blur quickly and output it. Okay, now when I render my image, um, I get this nice looking uh, feathered edge. And a couple of things I can do with that. Uh, when I go back to the 3D scene, uh, there's nothing that's uh, requiring the blue object to be fully encased inside of the other object. Uh, I can pull it part way out, and as you can see, I can pull it, you know, wherever I want to, and it will still work correctly. Uh, it will still feather out um, to the greatest distance, and the slightly blurred edge you see here is simply because of that fast Gaussian blur I did there. Otherwise, that would be an exact hard edge on there. Um, there is no internal anti-aliasing calculations going on inside of the double edge mat compositor node, uh, but you can pull the object outside of the other one, and that works just fine. Um, there is also nothing that's actually requiring these to be two-dimensional flat objects. This could be any 3D object that could be rendered, uh, could be used with this. Um, as an example, we're going to add um, Suzanne in there. And just uh, render this out here, and we'll give Suzanne the material that he had before. Okay, so bring this up a little bit. All right, now what we're going to do is I'm going to set again, since for now I'm using the pass index, uh, set the pass index of one here like I had it on the blue circle before. Uh, and now when I render, um, you notice that it's going to correctly feather from the shape of Suzanne out to the outer edge of that disk that I had placed in there as the outer mask object. So this does not have to be uh, two-dimensional objects, can be full 3D objects, and it will work just fine. Uh, this also supports usage uh, without the pass index that can be used just with render layers. Um, so I'm going to uh, take the pass indices off, respectively, and I'm going to go ahead and move the outer mask object into layer 2. And for the sake of just seeing it here, I'm going to turn both layers on. And I can uh, not output the object index anymore. Um, the first one I'm going to say uh, that is the inner. We'll have another one. We can call that outer. Um, outer is only going to be layer 2. Inner is only going to be layer 1. Um, that'll work pretty good for that. And then using uh, this system, we can drop the ID mask nodes entirely, add an additional render layer here, and I can say outer. And all we have to do is connect the alpha from that render layer since that is uh, that kind of black and white, you know, opacity mask we got going on there. Uh, the alpha can be connected directly outer and inner to the respective ones here, and render my image, and I will get the same calculated image without the use of the ID mask at all, uh, therefore eliminating the issue with the uh, full sample anti-aliasing altogether. You can just use render layers. Uh, there is some additional things that can be done with this. Uh, it does now correctly support um, the uh, rendering of the objects when they move, uh, perhaps you know, outside of the view space or something of that nature. Um, they will work just fine. So I can grab these objects, move them anywhere I want to, and render. And uh, it will still always work correct. I can move it part way off of the screen. And it will take just part of uh, Suzanne's ear here and part of the disk on the outside. It will still correctly render. I can move it part way back in. You see as we get closer and closer to the edges being brought in there, uh, you know, this will still work. It's not going to give you some kind of an error. It's not going to work. Um, again, these objects could be animated. It will still look smooth. Um, I'm going to do a quick demonstration uh, of some animated object here. Uh, we have some 
animated Bezier curves here it will still look okay uh, even when rendered this is a uh, 90 frames long it just does this cool little blobbing effect and the rendered version of that will look like this Okay, so uh, this is a, a brief demonstration. I am by no means a compositing guy, so I hope that all the compositors out there can uh, find some use in this and do some really cool things with it. Thanks for watching.